if you are an analyst who is still using spreadsheet programs to look at CSV data, then you have to stop. Check out DB Browser instead. In this video, we will look at the powerful tool that can import the CSV file and then allow you to use SQLite commands to quickly view, sort, and filter the data for important pieces of information that you're looking for. DB Browser for SQLite is a high quality open source tool designed to create, search, and edit SQLite database files. And it's very effective with those SQLite databases. But not too many people know that you can also read in a comma separate value file, which is a common output from a spreadsheet program or from forensic analysis tools. DB Browser is also great because it is available on the Windows, Mac OS, and Linux platforms all for free. You can download it from the link in the description below. If you are running on a platform like the Kane Forensic Distro, it's already installed for you. To get started using DB Browser, we first need to import a CSV file into a table. Let's go ahead and create a new database first. Choose a file name to save under. I'm going to go ahead and use demo1 in my downloads folder. And then DB Browser will ask to edit table definition. I'm going to hit cancel because we don't need to define anything because we will be loading it in. Next, we're going to go up to the file menu on top and then select input and then table from CSV file. A pop-up will appear. We're going to go ahead and navigate to our example CSV file. And then in the options pop-up, I want to check this here that says column names to be in the first line so that it's not part of the data, right? This makes it a lot easier for sorting and filtering and so forth. Then we want to make sure that you get the correct field separator selected. Uh, another common format is tab separated values. So you want to make sure you select the comma. And you can see in the preview window here that it has viewable columns. So if you select the wrong one, it's pretty apparent. And depending on the data you have, you may or may not want to adjust the quote character from double quotes to single quotes. Similarly for the encoding, my data is fine with UTF-8, but you may need to adjust yours depending on where your data is coming from. The rest of the options I will leave alone. So after the file is loaded, you can click on the Browse Data tab, and then you can see the data from the CSV. And looking at the bottom left, we can see that there are 30 entries in our particular file. Much like what you want from a spreadsheet, sorting is probably one of the more important things you're going to do. To sort a column, you're going to click on it, and I'm going to click on the gender column here. And notice the upside down triangle signifying an increasing order or alphabetical order. And if I click on the column header again, notice that the triangle now points the other way to indicate a sort by decreasing order. Notice also that there is a small number one next to the triangle. This tells you that this is the primary sort column. And with DB Browser, you can actually get a secondary sort column by doing a control click on the PC or command click if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the state as my secondary header column. Notice that now you see a small number two next to that column name. You want more? Yeah, DB Browser can provide multiple sort fields. So I will once again control or command click on the third column, which I'm going to pick the zip code to make that the tertiary sort field. Notice the small three next to the column name. And you can keep control clicking on columns to get even more sort fields. I'm not sure how granular you're going to get after, you know, maybe three, but hey, it's there if you need it. And when you want to get rid of all the sorting, then you can hit this top icon here to remove all the sorting fields. One thing you may notice in the zip code column is that it appears that the leading zero was removed in some of the zip codes. This is because by default, DB Browser will treat numbers as decimal and then remove the leading zeros. To fix that, let's right click on the zip column header and then choose Edit Display Format. 
And then we're going to click on the selector field here. We see the default chosen. We also see that we can choose the column to be displayed as a decimal, an exponent notation, a hex blob, and other number representations. In the next section, we see all of the date formats. And lastly, we see custom. Let's start with choosing decimal. We see that this says printf and then parentheses percent %d, comma, double quote, zip. So this means we want to print using the decimal format to display the column, which is why the leading zeros are removed. Let's modify it by adding 0, 5 between the percent and the D. The first 0 means you want to pad with leading zeros, and the 5 means that the total width of the output is 5 characters. Right, so it will fill in however many leading zeros need to be there. The other column we want to adjust is the transaction date column. Currently, it shows some numbers which appear meaningless because it's just a large number. However, from experience, I recognize those 13-digit numbers starting with 15 or 16 or 17 as the Linux Epoch time format. This is very common for data acquired from web browser artifacts. So the great thing about DB Browser is that it is aware of the various commonly used date formats, so we can again set the display format. And this time we are going to select Unix Epoch to date. So you see now we have human readable dates. Once again, to expand the column so that you can see all the data, just double click on the border for the column heading where you see the vertical line with the two arrows to both sides. Another common thing that analysts wants from a spreadsheet is to filter for items that they care about. Just beneath the column header is a row that says filter in each box. Here is where you can filter down the data based on criteria that you input. Let's say that you are only interested in female customers. So we can go to the gender filter box and then type in F for female. The filter will be active while you're typing so you don't need to hit return. Now let's say that you want to add another filter to find only female customers from Texas. We can go ahead and leave the gender filter intact. We can type TX in the state field to filter out for Texas. And so now we're left with two results. So you can compound the filters. So let's go ahead and clear the filters and try something else. You can either click on the black circular X individually for each column or click on the filter icon with the red symbol on top to remove all filters. Let's say now that you're interested in anyone whose zip code starts with a zero. If we just type zero into the filter box, we get zip codes that contain the number zero. So the powerful thing in DB Browser is that we can use regular expressions in the filter box. So all regular expressions have to be contained within a set of forward slashes. So let's go ahead and add those in the box. And the result is still going to be the same as when we just typed zero. And then the symbol for the beginning of a line is the caret symbol. So we can go ahead and add that to our existing filter. And now this will only filter zip codes that start with a zero. We can expand this out a little bit and say we are interested in zip codes that start with a zero or a two. So we can go ahead and add a bracket around the zero to say that we want anything that's within this set. And so that's still just returning the zip code that start with a zero. So now if we add the number two inside of that set, then we get zip codes that start with either a zero or a two. And we can add a number four in that set as well. So now we also see zip codes that starts with a four. So now we see that we have six results. So now let's say you're only interested in the reverse, right? Which are zip codes that don't start with zero, two, or four. One way to do this is if we specified a filter for zip codes that only start with one, three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, right? Or we can just reverse our current search pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the negative assertion, which is question mark, exclamation mark. 
and we're going to have to add parentheses around the pattern before that negative assertion. So now we have open slash for the regular expression. We have the caret for the beginning of the line. And then within parentheses, we are going to have the negative assertion of anything within the set that starts with 0, 2, or 4. And then, of course, we have to end this with the end parentheses and the other forward slash. So now we have these results. And we see from the bottom left here that we have 24 zip codes that don't start with 0, 2, or 4. Right? So this makes sense because we had six of them that start with 0, 2, and 4, and we have 30 lines in our data set. All right, as you can see, we can import a CSV file into DB Browser to analyze the data instead of using a spreadsheet program. We can easily sort different columns with as many sorting keys as you want. We can easily change the display format of the data to convert timestamps into human readable formats or spell out specific numeric notations. And we can also use regular expressions to filter for data we care about. What other things have you done in DB Browser that makes it better than using a spreadsheet program? Let everyone know in the comments below. For another video that I know you will enjoy, watch this video here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.